In this episode of Exploring Data Science, we'll consider supervised segmentation and some related concepts, including attribute selection with information gain, entropy, and classification trees. For more in-depth reading around these topics, you can refer to chapter three of the book Data Science for Business by Provost and Fawcett. As a reminder, a predictive model focuses on estimating the value of some particular target variable of interest. But how can we judge whether a variable contains important information about the target variable and how much? We'd like automatically to get a selection of the more informative variables with respect to the particular task at hand, namely predicting the value of the target variable. Even better, we might like to rank the variables by how good they are at predicting the value of the target. Multivariate supervised segmentation is just one application of this fundamental idea of selecting informative variables. This can help us when thinking about data science problems more generally. When we're presented with large sets of attributes, it can be very useful to select a subset of informative attributes. Doing so can substantially reduce the size of an unwieldy data set and will often improve the accuracy of the resulting model. When segmenting a population, we would technically like the resulting groups to be as pure as possible. By pure, we mean homogeneous with respect to the target variable. If every member of a group has the same value for the target, then the group is pure. But in real data, we would rarely expect to find a variable that will make the segments pure. However, if we can reduce the impurity substantially, then we can both learn something about the data and the corresponding population. There are several complications with segmentation. Firstly, Attributes rarely split a group perfectly. Even if one subgroup happens to be pure, the other may not. Secondly, not all attributes are binary. Many attributes have three or more distinct values. We must take into account that one attribute can split into two groups, while another might split into three groups or seven or more. How do we compare these? Thirdly, some attributes take on numeric values, continuous or integer, but does it make sense to make a segment for every numeric value? Well, no. So how should we think about creating supervised segmentations using numeric attributes? Fortunately, for classification problems, we can address all the issues by creating a formula that evaluates how well each attribute splits a set of examples into segments with respect to a chosen target variable. Such a formula is based on a purity measure. The most common splitting criterion is called information gain, and it's based on a purity measure called entropy. Both concepts were invented by one of the pioneers of information theory, Claude Shannon. Entropy is a measure of disorder that can be applied to a set. Disorder corresponds to how mixed or impure the segment is with respect to these properties of interest. Now let's look at how to apply our first concrete data mining technique. For a data set with instances described by attributes and a target variable, we can determine which attribute is most informative with respect to estimating the value of the target variable. So in this example, each data example or instance is one mushroom sample described in terms of its observable attributes or its features. We'll be using 5,644 examples from the data set comprising of 2,156 poisonous and 3,488 edible mushrooms. 
An excerpt of the 20 or so attributes and the values for each are listed in the table shown. We have attributes such as gill colour, cat colour, odour, stalk shape, etc. For a given example from the data set, each attribute takes on a single discrete value. For example, the gill colour might equal black. Note at the bottom of the list of attributes, we have the target variable, edible, which can have the value yes or no. In this example, we'll first look for the single attribute that gives us the highest information gain. To do this, we calculate the information gain achieved by splitting on each attribute. First, we need the entropy of the parent and the entropy of the whole data set. If the two classes were perfectly balanced in the data set, it would have an entropy of one. This data set is slightly unbalanced. There are more edible than poisonous mushrooms in the data set. And so its entropy is 0 0.96. This chart shows the entropy of the entire data set. In such a chart, the highest possible entropy corresponds to the entire area being shaded. The lowest possible entropy corresponds to the entire area being white. The entropy for the entire data set in this example is 0 0.96, so 96% of the area is shaded. Such a chart is also useful for visualizing information gain from different partitions of a data set, because any partition can be shown simply as slices of the graph, with widths corresponding to the proportion of the data set, each with its own entropy, as we'll see next. This chart shows the data set split apart by the attribute gill color, whose values are coded as Y for yellow, U for purple, N for brown, etc. The width of each attribute represents what proportion of the data set has that value, and the height is its entropy. We can see that the gill color attribute reduces the entropy somewhat as there is more white area visible on the chart. Here is a graph produced by the attribute odor. Many of the values, such as A for almond, C for creosote, and M for musty, produce zero entropy partitions. Only N for no odor has a noticeable entropy of about 20%. So what is this chart telling us? Well, without going into the maths or showing the entropy for all the other attributes, odor in fact has the highest information gain of any attribute in the mushroom data set. In other words, it has very low entropy. It can reduce the data set's total entropy to about 0 0.1, which gives it an information gain of 0 0.86, which is calculated from 0 0.96 take away 0 0.1, or the total data set entropy take away the attribute entropy. So what is this saying? Well, many odors are completely characteristic of poisonous or edible mushrooms. So odor is a very informative attribute to check when considering mushroom edibility. Let's now consider supervised segmentation with tree structured models. Tree structured modeling is an alternative approach to segmentation. In the example shown, we have a very simple classification tree which covers three attributes with a target variable of write-off, which can have a binary value of write-off or not write-off in the context of an insurance decision. Following the branches from the root node down in the direction of the arrows, each path eventually terminates at a terminal node or leaf the tree creates a segmentation of the data. Every data point will correspond to one and only one path in the tree, and thereby to one and only one leaf. In other words, each leaf corresponds to a segment, and the attributes and values along the path 
give the characteristics of that segment. There are many techniques to induce a supervised segmentation from a data set. And one of the most popular is to create a tree structured model. And this is called tree induction. These techniques are popular because tree models are typically easy to understand and because the induction procedures are elegant, simple to describe and easy to use. Another way of presenting the information contained in a classification tree is to transform it into a set of rules. Each rule consists of the attribute tests along the path connected with AND. In this example, we get the rules shown. Every classification tree can be expressed as a set of rules this way. Whether the tree or the rule set is more intelligible is a matter of opinion. In this simple example, both are fairly easy to understand. But as the model becomes larger, some people will prefer the tree or the rule set.